Shabbat Shalom, Boka Tov. Hi, I'm David Kornblum, and welcome to the Ministry Through Jewish Eyes. Sorry about being late, folks, but, you know, Facebook always puts these restrictions on, so it took a little bit of time to get in, but we are now in now. Baruch Hashem. I hope everybody is having uh, a, a good Shabbos. Uh, I want to get started right away. Today, I want to talk about covenant confusion. That's right, folks, covenant confusion. One question that I get from a lot of people is, what's the difference between the new and the old covenant? And, you know, I come to find out that a lot of people, I would have to say most people out there don't even realize or don't know what the new covenant entails. So first, what I'd like to do, family, is I'd like to go to, I'd like to start from the beginning. Um, let's look at the word covenant. And I want to give you the, the dictionary um, um, definition of the word covenant. So we're not lost, and I want to try to make this as simple as possible, okay? So the word covenant, what does it mean? If you look it up in the dictionary, covenant means an agreement usually formal between two or more persons or parties to do or not to do something specified. So it's an agreement, and to give it like a a theological meaning, uh, it's an agreement which brings about a relationship of commitment between God and his people. Now, the Jewish faith is based on biblical covenants. Listen, family, most people only think there's two covenants, but you have Noah, Noah, Abraham, Moses, and David. So again, Noah, Abraham, Moses, and David. That's four covenants so far. Okay, that's four covenants. So that's the the meaning of covenant. Now, what is confusion? Well, I want to give you the definition of confusion because I don't want anybody out there thinking that I am throwing stones at them and making fun of them or anybody here with Jewish eyes is saying, oh, you're confused, you know, because a lot of times when people, you know, they use that and and it just, it just gets a little hot. So I want to give the definition of confusion. So if you are confused, nobody's saying, oh, because you don't know. Confusion only means, now listen to me, lack of understanding or uncertainty. So basically, being confused about something is just because you just have a lack of understanding or you're uncertain. It's not that you're dumb or, you know, it's just you don't know. You know, uncertain, lack of understanding. And I I figured, let me put that in there so people don't think that, oh, you're throwing stones, you know, because let's face it, don't shoot the messenger. Well, I'm only reading what the word is saying. Okay, and you know, take it up with God. Baruch Hashem. So now, what is the old covenant? Let's go to the Torah. Let's go to the Exodus, the book of Exodus, chapter nineteen, verses three through eight. Now, I am not reading these uh, verses, these these uh, paragraphs from the Bible out of the Hebrew text. I'm actually, I, I usually like to read them from a Bible that's. Um, more common in churches, well, more common where people would have. So you would see the translation where the, where the version, it would be a, a, a familiar version, okay? And this is why I don't read actually from the Hebrew most of the time, or I do reference the Hebrew. So this is from the MEV version. It says this, uh, chapter 19, verse 3 through 8, it says, Moses went up to God and the Lord called to him from the mountain saying, thus you shall say to the house of Yaakov, the house of Jacob, And tell the children of Israel, verse 4, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians, how I lifted you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Verse 5, now therefore you will faithfully obey my voice and keep my covenant. Then you shall be my own treasure out of all the nations of the earth, for the earth is mine. So God is saying to Moses, tell the Jewish people, the people of Israel, that if you keep my commandments and you keep and and listen to what I'm saying to you, you will be my own treasure out of all the nations of the earth. I just wanted to, so we're not, we're on the same page here. Verse six, and you will be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Baruch Hashem. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. Doesn't that sound familiar, family? Now, this is Moses being the mediator between God and Israel, okay? And the Jewish people. Verse 7, So Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before them all these words which the Lord commanded him. Verse 8, key verse. Then all the people answered together, 
and said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses brought back the words of the people to the Lord. So Moses brought back the words. He said, listen, they said all that we could do. But it was here on Mount Sinai that God made a covenant with Moses and the Jewish people that renewed, now hear me folks, that renewed the one that he made with Abraham. Now I want to give you, now before I go on, because you got to remember, you know, he already made the covenant with Abraham. So he kind of renewed, well, no, he renewed it. He says, I'm good. And, and now, and it, and it gets better because this is where it's written. Now, just for further references, go to Exodus 24, 6 through 7. It says, Moses took, uh, Moses took half the blood and put it in basins and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. Verse 7. He took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, all that the Lord said, we shall do and we will be obedient. Now, I'm just going to go uh, skip down a few verses uh, without taking it out of context, because this is family. We don't want to ever take nothing out of context, but I'm just going to skip down to verse 12. And the Lord said to Moses, come up to, come up to me to the mountain and stay here, and I will give you the stone tablets, the law, basically the commandments, which I have written so that you may teach them. So Moses is the, one, well, one of the greatest rabbis that ever lived. So he's going to teach the, ch the children of Israel, the Jewish people, God's mitzvot, his commandments. Moses rose up with Joshua, his attendant, and Moses went up to the mountain of God. And just to give you a, a little bit further um, reference, we're going to go to Deuteronomy, Devarim, chapter 4, verse 13. And it says, so he declared to you his covenant, which com he commanded you to perform the Ten Commandments. He wrote them on two stone tablets okay so of course we know that the jewish people excuse me broke the covenant they didn't keep the commandments excuse me ah, baruch Hashem. we know that they broke the commandments and they didn't keep them they broke the covenant because they didn't keep the commandments but now what is the new covenant we see if we go to the book of hebrews where paul is speaking about the new covenant Okay, now what he's doing is he's actually quoting Jeremiah. So this is what Paul says. And also, family, I, I'm going to get to a part here where there is a discrepancy. Um, and like I said, please don't shoot the messenger. Uh, I, I'm just reading uh, the Bible to you. So, um, but I'm going to point that out to you so you could see for yourself that, you know, we have to study these the Bible, uh, the Brit Adushah, the, the New Testament, we have to study it in, in so many versions. We have to uh, search and see because there are uh, quite a bit of errors here. Um, so let's go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 8, verse uh, 6 through 12. But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry because he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established with better promises. So right off the bat, Paul is saying that Yeshua is the mediator, just like Moses was the mediator. Now, Yeshua, the Mashiach, is the uh, mediator, and he's bringing an excellent ministry, but with better promises. So right off the bat, the new covenant is a better covenant. Baruch Hashem. Of course it is. And wait, it gets better. And I'm going to read it to you. That's why it's a better covenant. Hallelujah. I love you. Bechad believe. So he says, uh, let me read that again. But now he obtained a more excellent ministry because he is the mediator of a better covenant, of course, which was established on better promises. Verse 7. For if the first covenant had been faultless, there'd be no occasion to have been sought for a second. For finding fault with them, God says. And here we go. Surely the days are coming. This is from Jeremiah. Says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Remember, the, the kingdoms, they split Israel and Judah. Okay, and that hasn't been fulfilled yet. They haven't come back together yet. Okay, keep that in mind. And then, uh, um, excuse me, with the house, um, let me read that again. Surely the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, Yehuda. Uh, not according to the covenant I made with their fathers in that, in that day when I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt because they did not keep my covenant now, here's where there is a discrepancy. And then the writer says that Paul said this, and I rejected them, said the Lord. So they're saying that Paul said that uh, they did not keep the covenant and God rejected them. So remember that. He said that God rejected and them, meaning the Jewish people. 
Uh, verse 10, this is the covenant which I've made with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their minds and I will and write them on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Verse 11, no longer shall, now listen, this is another key. No longer shall every man teach his neighbor and every man say to his brother, saying, know the Lord, for he shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. So what that is saying is that nobody, like I can't say to you, know who God is, know who the Messiah is, and you're going to say to me, I already know them. You know, this is what it's saying. Even the most unlearned person will know it from the least of them to the greatest of them. Verse 12, for I will have mercy towards their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawlessness deeds. Now, remember, lawless means in the Bible that when you're lawless, that means you're breaking the commandments. You're breaking the, the God's mitzvot. OK, so that's what the word lawless in reference to what it means in, in the Bible. And I will remember their sins no more. Now. Let's go. And now, family, when I talked about the discrepancy in here where it says that Paul said that I reject them, well, I'm going to go to the same exact Bible and I'm using the MEV version, okay? And I'm going to quote, I'm going to go right to Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31 through 34. And it says the same exact thing. Surely the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and, I, and the house of Judah. And it will not be according to the covenant I made with their fathers. In that day, I took them out of the, by the hand and brought them out of the land of Egypt because they broke my covenant, although I was a husband to them, says the Lord. So you see where it says here that I rejected them and actually says, no, they broke the covenant, but I was still their husband. God was still married to Israel. He was still connected to Israel. So that's in the same Bible. So, family, when I tell you to read the Bible, please don't shoot the messenger. Don't be upset with me. But when I tell you, read the Bible, understand and read different versions, because look at this. It's saying that God rejected Israel, the Jewish people. And then in, in, the, in the Tanakh, the Hebrew Scriptures, and some of you refer to the Old Testament, it says, no, they broke the covenant, of course, but God was still their husband. So, okay, yeah. And this is another instruction for itself, okay? So study it and, and understand it for yourself. But let me go back to this. Um, and it says, it's, I'm going to read that again. Not according to the covenant which I made with their fathers. In that day, I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt because they broke my covenant, although I was still a husband to them, says the Lord. So there's no, there's no word, I rejected them in there. Baruch Hashem. Verse 33, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, say, Lord, I will put my law within them and write it in their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. They shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every neighbor his brother saying, know the Lord, for they shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, said the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem. So you see, Shaul, Paul, is quoting Jeremiah 31, 34, 31 through chapter 31, 31 through 34, verses 31 through 34. And like I said, there is a little discrepancy there. So, you know, that, like I said, you know, I, I don't have uh, an answer for that, but that's why I say study the word together and understand what you're reading. Okay, so you've noticed after I showed you what the new covenant was, and what the new covenant is and what the old covenant was, what do you see, family? Think about what I read to you, okay? What do you see? Have you noticed that the Torah, God's commandments, is the center and the foundation of both covenants? The first covenant, he said, I'm going to write it on stone and Moses, Moshe is going to teach it to Yehuda, to the Jewish people, okay? But now he says, I'm going to put in my new covenant which it makes it better. I'm not going to put it in stone. I'm going to put it in your heart and in your mind so you will do it. So no man will say to another man, no God. And let me tell you something, folks. A lot of people say that this has been fulfilled. Impossible. How can this covenant be fulfilled? You, like I said before, Yehuda, Israel and Judah are still split 
right? We're not back in Israel and we have missionaries all over the world trying to tell people about who God is. And here it says, you won't have to say to anybody because they'll know me already because I would have already wrote my word and my commandments in their heart and minds. And I wouldn't be here on Facebook Live telling you this message. Baruch Hashem. So these are things to come. It's, it's in the process. We are in the Messianic times. We are in the times of the coming of the Mashiach. Baruch Hashem. Come quick, please. <laughs> come quick. Oh, goodness. Goodness gracious. But to get back to this, you know, keeping the commandments. Now, this is another thing. You know, everybody's always saying, Paul Shaul is saying, We've done away with the commandments. That's, a, that's not true. That's a lie. Paul never said that. You're misinterpreting what he's saying. Let's look what Paul says in the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 31. And now I'm not taking this out of the context, my family. I am bringing this to you in the same context because it's talking about having faith in Messiah. Who is that? Yeshua. Listen to what it says. It says, do we then nullify the, uh, and well, excuse me, do we then, verse 31 and chapter 3 of Romans, Paul is saying, do we then nullify, make void the law, the Torah, through faith? Listen to this, through faith. And what does Paul reply to the question? Absolutely not. May it never be. God forbid. Instead, we, we uphold the commandments. We uphold the law. So Paul right here is saying, no. No, because of faith, because a lot of people think just faith alone gets you uh, a ticket into the kingdom. That's not true, because that's not what he's saying here. And I'm going to prove it even more. I wish more people would do the study on the book of James, the brother of Yeshua. Because Yaakov said, look what Yaakov says. James chapter 2, verse 14 says this. What does it profit, my brothers, if a man says he has faith but has no works. Did you hear that? Let me read it to you again, my family. Remember, please, family, I love you. Don't shoot the messenger. What does it profit, my brothers, if a man says he has faith but no works? Can faith save him? This is Yaakov. This is the brother of Yeshua. Can faith save him? Verse 15, if a brother or a sister is naked, lacking daily food, verse 16, and one of them says to you, depart in shalom, depart in peace, be warm and filled, and yet you give them nothing that the body needs, what does it proffer? Verse 17, so faith by itself, it has no works, is dead. Faith without works is dead. But a man may say, you have faith, I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Hallelujah. You believe that there is one God, you do well. The demons also believe and tremble. But look, Hashem. Do I need to go on? Of course I do. Hallelujah. Of course I have to go on because people need to hear the message. Faith without works is dead. Listen, during our Shabbos last night, I always read, you know, scripture on the Sabbath. And if you go to Exodus in the book of Ezekiel, it says that when you keep the Shabbat, that is a work. That is a good deed. You're keeping a commandment. It shows the world that you are connected to God. Go to Ezekiel. Go to the Exodus. And you will see exactly what I'm saying. Faith without works is dead. From the mouths, from the mouth of, 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 of Yaakov, J, uh, James, the brother of Yeshua. And I'm going to read this to you. Okay. Um, uh, uh, what's it going to say? In, in 9, Ezekiel. I'm going to go to the book of Ezekiel. Listen, and before I get any further, God is promising us to, uh, promising us to, that we will be enabled to keep the commandments. This is what makes this covenant a better covenant, a better ministry, uh, with better promises. How is, because when I read to you before with better promises from, uh, the book of, um, of, of, uh, Hebrews, it, it's a better, pro, it's a better covenant with better promise because God is promising that he will write. Now listen, he will write his his Torah in your heart and mind. So basically, he's enabling you to do it. You won't have to learn it from somebody else because they'll already be here and will already be here. I got that right. In the heart and in the mind. Okay, but let's go to the book of Ezekiel. Let's see what Ezekiel says from the Tanakh, the Hebrew Scriptures. of uh, Chapter 36, 
verse 26 through 27, it says, also, I will give you a new heart, a new spirit I will put within you and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. Verse 27, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to obey my commandments, my Torah, my laws, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. So right here, Ezekiel was talking about the new covenant. What, what good, what, how much better is the new covenant? Listen, the first covenant, he wrote his commandments and instructions on stone. Okay, Moses was teaching it to Israel. Now he's putting it in our heart. So basically we won't have to try to do it because we're going to actually do it normally. Listen, the, the Bible says that the Torah is perfect. The word of God is perfect. When you find discrepancies, then you need to get another Bible and make sure that the Bible you're reading is, is on. God doesn't make mistakes. Man makes mistakes. God makes, whatever God makes good, man, man makes bad. And whatever man, God makes bad, man makes good. Did you get that? Whatever God made good, man made bad. And whatever God made bad, man made good. Man has totally turned it around and completely turned the word inside out. Baruch Hashem. Hallelujah. Listen, the covenant that God made with Moses and the Jewish people, and let me get back to this, okay, family, um, was a corporate covenant. Okay, hear me out. When you go to Mount Sinai, when you were on Mount Sinai, in front of all the nation of Israel, all the Jewish people, God is making the covenant with a corporate. It's a corporate covenant. And he, then he's writing it on stone and giving it to Moshe. And Moses is coming in. Now Moses is going to be the great rabbi and teacher to the children. Remember, they called Yeshua great rabbi, great rabbi. Okay, listen, this is why we need a Messiah. This is why we need somebody to come and help us, to, to save us from this misery. You hear what I'm saying? Okay, this was a corporate covenant. Now, I know a lot of people said, well, you know, because when it comes to doing the Bible, the, the Torah, people say, oh, you're not saved by the law. Nobody ever said that. But if you don't keep the commandments, then you're not keeping your obligation, the covenant that you're making with God. Capish? <laughs> That's Italian. You understand? Okay? Okay? So that was a corporate covenant. But now when God says he's going to write the commandments on your heart and in your minds, what God has done was personalized it. So now each individual person is going to have it here and here. And this is where the personal relationship comes in. Remember, Yeshua said in the book of Matthew, and Matthew, I didn't come to do away with the Torah. And anybody who teaches even the least of the commandments, you're not going to make it into the kingdom. This is Yeshua. Listen, go on the words of what Yeshua says. Okay? Understand that. And he says, not until heaven and earth disappear. Not one jot, one line from the Torah shall be taken away. Now, why do you think Yeshua said, not, not until heaven and earth disappear. Why did you think he said that? Why do you think he used that analogy 2,000 years ago? Because that analogy would be comprehensible to eternity. Because if you say car, and I always say, we always go over this uh, during Shab a, a lot of times on, on during Shabbos when we talk and in and, and, and the ministry here and through Jewish lives, you know, um, um, analogies of this is why I say study history so you understand the analogies that they were making as well. You can't say car or rocket 2,000 years ago because they'll look at you like you're on Meshuggah. Like, what are you talking about? So this is why Yeshua said not until heaven and earth disappear. Okay? So we would understand that to this day, the, the present day that we are living in. Understand? Okay? So, but now God is making a personal relationship with him. Look how that is. I mean, you're not going to be, you, you can't, listen, we're all going to make mistakes. But when it's put on our heart and he softens our heart, now he gives us the, the capability to do it. Family, I hope that you understand the difference now between the new and, and the old covenant. And the foundation of both covenants are exactly the same, the same commandments. It didn't, dis it didn't uh, differ. It's the same. The same because God's word is the same today, tomorrow, and forever and ever. Leolam va'ed. And in closing, I'd like to close with scripture. Of course I do. I love you all. Baruch Hashem. I'm going to go to Psalms chapter 40, verse 9 through 8. I delight to do your will, my God. Your law, your Torah is within my heart. Oh, Baruch Hashem. I have proclaimed the good news of righteousness in the great congregation. Behold, I will restrain my lips, Lord. You know. Now, this is from the book of Psalms. 
Now I'm going to go to the, another uh, book, uh, another um, psalm, in Psalm 19, 7 through 9. It says, your Torah, your law is perfect. Psalms 19, verse 7. Your law, your Torah is perfect. Listen to what it says about the Torah, the law of God. Your law is perfect. It gives us new life. His teachings is last forever and gives wisdom to ordinary people. So it's saying that God's Torah, his law is perfect. His teachings last forever and it gives wisdom to just ordinary people. You don't have to be a theologian or a rocket scientist to understand what God is saying in his word. Remember what Peter says. He says, the Bible interprets itself. There's no private interpretation. So what that means is there's no, you don't need to be a theologian or read a theology book. If it says it, it says it. I don't want people to think that, oh, well, it says this. And then somebody comes along and says, well, he's actually saying, no, don't say that because it doesn't say that in the word of God. Baruch Hashem. If it says it here, it says it here. God is not a God of confusion. And then it says the instructions is right. It makes our hearts glad. His commandments shine brightly and give us light. Worshiping the Lord is sacred and he, and he will worship the Lord and all his decisions are correct and fair. Oh, wow. Beautiful. I love it. Psalms 119, 142. Of course, I'm going to read this. Thy righteousness is everlasting righteousness and your law, your Torah is what? Truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, a book. Mark chapter seven, verse eight. For you, for you ignore God's laws, God's commandments and substitute your own tradition. Now, this is Yeshua saying this. Read the rest of the context of this. You'll see what he's talking about. You take man-made traditions over God's commandments. This is Yeshua. Yeshua again. This is Yeshua saying this. Matthew, Matthew, Matthew verse, uh, chapter 7, verse 13 through 14. Go through the narrow gate because the narrow gate to hell is wide and the road leads to it is easy. Therefore, many, many, many travel onto it. Verse 14. But the gate to life is narrow and the way leads, it's hard. And very, very few people find it. So Yeshua is saying that the, the gate, the road to hell and destruction is wide and easy and almost everybody jumps on that road. But the road to life is few, it's thin and narrow and very and hard and very few people find it. You notice that Yeshua said the word of God is not hard. He said the road following the word of God is hard. So basically he's saying that when you follow the, the, the word of God, which Yeshua referred to the Hebrew scriptures, the Torah, and, and everything in the Hebrew scriptures as the word of God. You remember, because when Yeshua was on the earth and all the disciples, what did they teach from? Paul and all of them? They taught from what? The Tanakh, the Hebrew scripture. And many of you know it as the Old Testament. Okay, and let's go. Let's see what else Yeshua has to say. Baruch Hashem. Matthew, chapter 7, verse 21 through 23. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, hear me. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my father. Yeshua is saying, only the ones who follow what my father is saying. Remember, Yeshua says, I don't come on my own authority. These are not my commandments. These are not my words. I only say and do exactly what the father tells me to say and do. Baruch Hashem, remember that. And let me read that again. Not everyone who goes out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my father will enter in. On Judgment Day, verse 22 Many of you will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast the demons out in your name and performed many miracles in your name. And Yeshua will say, verse 23, but I will reply, I never knew me. I never knew you. Get away from me, you who breaks God's commandments. You who break, or other versions say, you who breaks God's laws. Or in some versions say, you who are lawless, which is breaking the, God's commandments. You know, so Yeshua is saying, listen, I don't know who you are. You know, you went around preaching the gospel and telling everybody how much God loves them and Jesus loves them, but you didn't keep any of my commandments. How am I? So, yeah, I don't know you. I don't know you. And you know what? And, and listen, and to have a merciful heart, you know, these people that are saying this to, to, the, uh, to, to the Messiah on Judgment Day, listen, they sound like people that really thought that they were doing the right thing with compassion. So they weren't bad people. No, they thought they were doing the right thing. But you know what, family? They were misled. When you listen to the word of man and don't follow what exactly what the Bible is saying and read it in tale, you know, I notice most people, what they'll do is they'll read a verse or a chapter, but they won't read further on. 
You know, and they'll just stay on that verse because that's what they're told to read. And what happens is they get confused. And then when they see a discrepancy where they see there's a problem, well, this is not what it means. The context is different. You know, then they get upset. And this is not what it's about. You need to read the Bible. You need to study this. You need to read chapter by chapter, verse by verse, book by book, and understand it. And if you find a discrepancy with the Hebrew scriptures, the Tanakh, the Old Testament, as some people refer it to, then you need to search it out and you need to find it and you need to go and listen. And this is what you're supposed to, let's go to Yehoshua, the book of Joshua. You know, we're supposed to meditate and study the word of God day and night. And this is why you see a lot of Orthodox Jews studying in, in, in Yeshiva, in, in Yeshiva, studying the, the, the Torah, the, the, the Tanakh, the Hebrew scriptures day and night because they want to get with them. They want to understand what God is saying. Let's go to the book of John. Another, uh, 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 another thing Yeshua is saying, just as my father loved me, I will also love you and remain in my love. If you remain in my love, uh, excuse me, let me read that again. Just as the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Remain in my love, verse 10. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love just as I kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. And I always like to read this one next because a lot of people say, well, you see, you know, there's no, Yeshua didn't write another Bible. <laughs> he didn't write new commandments because the first commandments were perfect. That's what the Bible says, that they are perfect. The law is perfect. The Torah is perfect. Yeshua says this uh, in the same book. You go to the book of John chapter 12, 49 through 50. It says, I don't speak of my own authority. The father who has sent me has commanded me what to say and how to say it. Verse 50. I know his commandments lead to internal life. Why would Yeshua say that? I know his commandments lead to internal life. So I say, whoever I, so I say, whatever the father tells me to say. So right off the bat, Yeshua is saying that, listen, it's not my commandments, they're his commandments. So if anybody's a little confused of what the commandments are and whose they are, there you go. Right from, the, right from the, word, the mouth of the Messiah. Okay? So don't throw a stone and don't be upset with me. I am just a messenger. Let's go to the first John chapter 2, verse 3 through 6. Now by this we know we have come to know God. Listen to this. First John chapter 2, verse 3 through 6. Now by this we know that we've come to know God if we keep his commandments. The one who says, I've come to know God and yet does not keep his commandments is a liar. So if you tell me that you know God and you don't keep the Sabbath and you don't keep none of the mitzvot and none of the commandments, this here in the New Testament is saying that you're a liar. Whoa, that's pretty strong. Hey, don't, don't, throw, don't, don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> I still, I love you. But this is what it says in the book, in the Bible. And the truth is in not such a person. Verse 5, but whoever obeys his commandments, the word truly in this person, the love of God has been perfected. So by keeping the commandments, you're perfecting the love of God. This is what it says in the book and the and first John and the New Testament. By this we know the one who says he resides in God ought to walk just as the Messiah walked. Why? Because Yeshua kept the commandments. If you want to be like Yeshua, right, you got to keep the commandments because that's what he did. And I have a, a, a message on this page. Uh, what, would, what would Jesus do? Well, how would you know what he did? How, how would you know what he would do if you didn't know what he did? That's a teaching that you should go to uh, down below and you'll understand that even more. And let's go. I'm going to bring it to a close with the last two uh, 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 um, scriptures here. And uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 2 to 3. By this we, uh, excuse me, 1 John chapter 5, verse 2 to 3. By this, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and follow his commandments. Verse three, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. So right here in the New Testament, in the Brit Adishah, it says this, for this is the true love of God when we keep his commandments. Family, I don't know how to interpret that any other way. I don't know. Listen, if a theologian says to you or a teacher says to you that that's not what it means, then I, I don't know what to tell you because I don't know how to translate that in any other way. Baruch Hashem. And last I and mean, surely not least, John chapter 14, uh, verse 21. The one who has my commandments and keeps it is the one who loves me. What? Let me read that again. Verse 21. The one who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. And the one who loves me will be loved by my father. And I will love him and I will reveal myself to him. That's Yeshua speaking. Listen, family, this is why in the new covenant, 
right? God is going to put his commandments in our heart and in our mind. So we won't have a problem. We won't have a struggle. We won't be disobedient this time. We will do exactly what his word is saying. Let's pray. Baruch Hashem Yehovah. Father, we thank you for allowing us to come to you on this Shabbos morning and to spread the good news and speak the truth of your word. Father, I want to pray that you plant this seed and I ask and I beg this, Father, and I ask that I have mercy, but put a seed of righteousness, of truth, and a desire into the hearts and minds of everybody listening that they will seek out your word and that the truth will be revealed to them of what you're saying to them in your word and what Yeshua was teaching us and what he was telling us about life and living forever and how to do so with salvation. Father, so I just ask that. And Lord, I also pray and I ask that you have mercy on all the people out there that uh, are getting sick. Because I know there's a lot of people getting sick out there. I ask and I, Father, have mercy upon their souls. And I ask you, Father God, that you continue to heal them and, and give them relief, Father. We love you. We praise you. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Omein, 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 and omein. Listen, family, I love you. Baruch Hashem, I so adore and look forward to these Saturdays that we get together on Facebook Live and we come together and share God's word. Listen, for all of you out there, I just want to thank you for the emails and the, and, and, and the uh, letters that are coming and the messages that you guys send me. I love them and I will answer everyone. Uh, I promise I'm, I'm getting to them. But if any of you out there are interested in finding out more about this ministry through Jewish Eyes, please, you know, you could either go to the link down below on this page and, and hit that link through Jewish Eyes and it will take you to the website and it will give you information on this ministry. If you want to help this ministry financially or any way of uh, support this ministry, go through through Jewish Eyes. And also we have a YouTube page too as well. Listen, family, till the next time. May the right hand of God be upon your life. May he lead you in the direction that you need to go. May his light always shine upon you so you never go astray. Until next time, family, be safe, love one another, spread the good news. God loves you and I love you. Baruch Hashem, Yehovah, Shalom, Shalom.